This video is an overview of the chemical kinetics playlist. So we start off with the kinetic theory of gases where we derive the kind of average velocity of a gas particle based off of its collisions with an individual uh, container wall. And we derive things like that the average energy, the average velocity is equal to 8 RT over pi times the molar mass of the gas particle, square root for all of that. There are also different metrics for the average speed called the root mean squared average speed, which is you take the average square speed and take its square root, which is square root of three times gas constant times temperature over molar mass. And then there's also a most probable speed which is slightly lower than either of these two speeds, which is 2RT over M square root. The actual distribution of molecular speeds in a sample of gas is given by the Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution, which I've graphed over here, which is 4 pi times mass over 2 pi Boltzmann constant times temperature, all that to the power of 3 halves, times the speed squared, U squared, times E to the minus mass speed squared over Boltzmann constant times temperature. So this starts at pretty much zero at a speed of zero, reaches some maximum, and then slowly decays with a heavy tail back down to zero. So we have our most probable speed, which is slower than our average speed, which is slower than our root mean squared speed. We also calculate some other properties like the mean free path, which determines how, which is the average distance a particle travels before it gets in a collision with another gas particle, RT over square root of two Avogadro's number times cross-sectional area, which is an effective molecular size times pressure, and the total collision rate, which tells us how many collisions occur per unit volume per unit time in a sample of gas, which is the cross-sectional area of the gas times its density squared, times the average speed of a gas molecule divided by the square root of 2, which for a sample of N2 gas at 298 Kelvin gives us something like 10 to the 29th collisions per cubic centimeter per second, a, a lot of collisions. In reaction rates, we define our reaction rates in terms of uh, 1 over volume times the change of extent of reaction over time, which is also equal to more obtainable quantities like minus 1 over stoichiometric coefficient of a reactant times the change in the molarity of that reactant over time, change of its concentration over time. We also have rate laws, which where the rate of reaction is equal to a rate constant times a reactant to a given power, this power called the reaction order for that reactant, and then this for all reactants. These reaction orders are often integers like 0, 1, or 2, but could also be half integers on certain occasions. We can integrate these types of rates to get the integrated rate law, which is a constant, a time-dependent concentration. Like for first-order reactions, we have that the concentration of A as a function of time is equal to its initial concentration, a naught, times e to the minus kt. And we have things like half-life, the time which it takes for a reactant to approach half of its original concentration, which for first-order reactions is time-independent and is the natural log of 2 divided by the rate constant. We can determine what the reaction order for a given reactant is by fixing all of the concentrations of the reactants which are not that reactant and then calculating the rate at two different concentrations of that reactant. So taking the natural log of V2 over V1, taken at two different concentrations of A, divided by natural log of the second concentration of A, divided by the first concentration of A. And we also look at the Arrhenius equation, which tells us about the activation barrier for the equation, for the reaction, the activation energy, which determines how the rate constant varies as a function of time. And the rate constant equals some factor A times E to the minus activation energy divided by gas constant times temperature. And finally, we look at reaction mechanisms, which tell us about the elementary steps needed in order to form a complex reaction, which we can observe. So going from reactant to product might not be a single step. There might be several steps involved. And each step 
which has a given activation barrier and transition state is called an elementary chemical reaction. And each of those have their own rate laws and rate constants. Forward direction K1, reverse direction K minus 1, forward direction K2, reverse K minus 2. And this given example here has an intermediate, which is neither a reactant or a product, but is also a stable species. And it has two elementary steps, one, two, forming this complex net reaction. Detailed balance says that the equilibrium constant for every elementary step along the way at equilibrium is equal to its forward rate constant divided by its reverse rate constant. And that's true for all elementary steps when you're at equilibrium. That's the principle of detailed balance. If you have one step which has a rate constant which is much, much lower than every other step, then that step can be called a rate determining step and your integrated rate law overall is going to be primarily determined by that individual step. That's why it's called rate determining since it is much slower and it determines what the rate law and what the integrated rate law is. We can also develop the steady state approximation which says that the change in the concentration of an intermediate over time equals zero. And this is valid if we have our second step here being much, much faster than our first. And we can use this to derive expressions for various complicated mechanisms which involve intermediates or several intermediates. And then we have catalysis where the activation barrier, our energy of activation, is changed. We can lower our energy of activation and change the kinetics, but we're not changing the thermodynamics of the reaction. There is no change in the Gibbs energy of reaction, just changing the activation barrier so that a catalyst is something that it participates in the reaction such, a, such to lower the activation barrier, but it does not actually get consumed or produced. Thus, it does not affect the thermodynamics. And finally, we look at Michaelis-Menten kinetics, where we derive an expression for the rate law of enzyme, uh, an enzyme acting on a substrate in a catalysis of a certain reaction, where we have the Michaelis-Menten rate law uh, determined in terms of the initial concentration of enzyme, initial concentration of substrate, and various rate constants involved in that process.